Hello everybody, my name is Amol Patel, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where every afternoon at 1pm Pacific Standard Time, we talk to startup founders about their journey in the startup world. Today, I'm Jeff, I'm joined with... Hey guys, I'm Jeff Pelton down here in San Diego. And we've got an amazing interview with Shane Reiser from StartupGenome.com. Uh, Jeff, tell us more about Startup Genome. Yeah, so this is a great website where you can come to find out about the startup community in your city, or really any city uh, like in the nation. So, um, for example, why don't we pull up Los Angeles? Let's take a look at what we've got there. All right, so yeah, here so we we've are. We've got everything labeled from startups, investors, accelerators, incubators, uh, events, and more. Got you. So, um, if I live in Los Angeles, and if I want to find other startups in my neighborhood and my zip code, let's say, or investors, this would be a great resource for me to figure out who they are and uh, possibly start connecting with them. Yeah, right, absolutely. We talked about some of the use cases, like you know, moving to a new city or looking for companies that you might want to work for, uh, companies you might want to just be near, yeah. uh, you know, walking distance. So, like here, you know, I can see that. There's clearly a hub of startups right down here in uh, uh, Santa Monica. Right. So that might be a good spot. I'm Why don't we zoom into that 103, here. whatever that is down there? Sure. There we go. Yeah. So here we are in Santa Monica, which is uh, definitely a very popular uh, hub for startups now uh, here mm -hmm. in Southern California. And uh, yeah, it's really great. I can see all the different companies where they're physically located on the map. Uh, so give, uh, obviously, if I'm moving to Southern California, I'm from, let's say, New York or. San Francisco or some other area of the world or the country, uh, this would be a great way of finding uh, possible companies to reach out to if I'm looking for a job or um, just simply finding out events and other kind of things that are going on here. Yeah, exactly. It's great that they have things like uh, cross campus, you know, and co working places down there. Uh, you know, you might want to be close to those sorts of community hubs uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, so, um, you know, this turned out to be a pretty long interview. Um, we talked a lot about um, how this mapping data could be a leading indicator for certain industries, uh, leading indicator for innovation that's happening in different parts of the country, in different parts of the world. Uh, what's nice is Shane uh, showed us that you can that he theoretically would like to break this down into sectors, like the automotive sector. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know if we lost a map, but yeah, so it, yeah. on that map you can break so it down filters. by sec by sector and, and all kinds of other interesting ways of dividing up the data. Uh, Jeff, can you tell us well, how would you use their data and their API from a developer's perspective? Well, it's just really great that they're really focused on curating the data. Uh, there's a lot of sites that do different things and have interfaces and communities, but they're focused on the data, so you know it's going to be good. They're basically crowdsourcing it through throughout the country, right, by having these ambassadors or, yep. or curators, curators of, uh, yep. of each city make sure that the, the data is good. Right. Uh, we talk about things like that, like what is a startup, uh, what is the, the life cycle of a startup, when, a, a, you know, how, when do we remove it from the map or, right. or we kind of cross them off as dead. Uh, right. So a lot of that stuff is really useful to have quality, uh, accurate data. Yeah. So, uh uh, start, yeah. yeah, in in marketing, uh, maps are used quite a bit uh, to figure out where your, um, you know, where customers are, where they're, where the best customers are, how to create your retail locations. Let's say from a mapping perspective, maps are used uh, for demo demographics. Uh, in this regard, uh, maps could be used for innov you know, figuring out, like I mentioned earlier, where uh, innovative companies are happening, why they happen in that area, or Boston, for example, or Southern California and San Diego. San Diego is really well known for biotech, and there's some reasons for that. Uh, the university tends to have a lot of uh, biotech professors, you know, and they're... Uh, and that they spin off a lot of startups. So uh, the mapping, I think, uh, can show relationships between universities, between the, the innovations that happen there, the, the companies that uh, harness that research. Um, so it's a lo it's, there's a lot of very interesting stuff that could be gleaned from this uh, from this website. Um, yeah, it's a really useful tool for the community. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm hoping other startups start to mine this data and add their uniqueness to it and uh, mash their data up with other things I think could be really powerful. Uh, so um, if you don't have anything to add, Jeff, we can cut to the interview. Yeah, let's just remind everyone to uh, subscribe to us and rate us on iTunes and tell your yeah. friends and family and uh, make sure if you learned anything from this uh, interview, please do pass it along. That's yeah, uh, absolutely. What we want the most. Absolutely, and, and like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we shoot the show daily, Monday to Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please uh, definitely check that out, and uh, we're going to have a chat and all of that sort of thing, right, Jeff? Yeah, you'll be able to find the schedule and the chat room and the live show all from our website, smokinghotcoffee.com. 
Awesome. All right, so uh, definitely check this out. You're going to learn a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me on your show, guys. It's our pleasure. Yeah, man, thanks for coming on. So, all right, so Shane, uh, I, I discovered this. I don't know how, the, your site. I don't even know how I found it, but I stumbled on it somewhere, and I just thought it was really great that somebody had, had you know, basically created a big database of all these different startups and almost like geocoded the different, geo, you know, where they're at and regionally in the world and all that. So tell me, what was the, you know, your rationale doing it and why'd you, you know, give us a little bit of background. Why'd you pull it up? You know, why'd you do that? Sure, sure. So um, for a while, I was the COO over at Startup Weekend. Are you familiar with Startup Weekend? Oh, we yeah. sure are, yeah. Forgot to wear my shirt today. <laughs> oh, you wearing a Startup Weekend shirt? Uh, no, I, I've participated. Oh. I uh, took second, yeah. You should have. Um, I know. <laughs> well, anyway, I, uh, I joined Startup Weekend kind of early in their journey, back when they first got their grant from the Kauffman Foundation. Okay. And uh, came on board as a COO and helped them kind of build out some infrastructure. And uh, along the way, I got to train a lot of their volunteers around the world. Okay. And got to know them. And I noticed that a lot of them were doing this. They were mapping their local startup community. Yeah. Uh, they were doing it on whiteboards. They were hand drawing things and you know taping them up on the wall. Some yeah, of them yeah. had Excel spreadsheets. Some of them had more advanced mind mapping software that they were using. All right. Um, but I noticed that uh, for one, it was important to them. But I noticed that they would give up after a while because it became too much work. Yeah. Or they would forget about it. Right. Um, some some of them would share it openly with others. Some of them wouldn't. Right. And I thought, what a shame, man. All this stuff should be documented. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should have a tool online they can use to visual, visual, visualize this stuff. Right, and right. Then, um, and it should be just there. So yeah. it's open, free, and anybody can find it. Very, very cool. So that was how it all got yeah. started. How long have you had this around, or when did you start this thing? Well, actually, to be honest with you, we, uh, we put together a really bad version of it in, uh, in 2011. Okay. Uh, and it was just terrible, so we ripped it down. And uh, June of last year, we rebuilt it and launched it. So it's been it's been around since um, been around for a little bit less than a year now. Okay, okay. And, and um, obviously, Startup Weekend's been uh, has been very popular. I, I, are you getting finding a lot of your word of mouth through that community, and has it been growing based on that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm still one of Startup Weekend's most active volunteers, even though I don't work there anymore. I think I'm one of their most active volunteers. I like to think I am. Right. Um, but a lot of the, one, one thing I haven't explained yet is Startup Genome depends on local curators who actually live in each city right. to curate the data and yeah. approve and reject new submissions. A lot of those guys and girls are Startup Weekend organizers themselves. Okay. 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 Very cool. Very cool. Very give it, give it, give us your uh, a little bit more of your background. Like you know, I know you're in Omaha. How'd you end up there? Well, um, honestly, my I just followed my wife around. She <laughs> okay. is she's a doctor in the Air Force. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, so she doesn't get to decide exactly where she is all the time. Right. And I moved, I moved to Des Moines after college because she went to med school there, and then I went to Seattle for a while with her, and now I'm here in Omaha. She's stationed at an Air Force base here in Omaha. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Tell us about the startup scene out there in Omaha. Yeah, you know, it's pretty good. I've been here for about a year, and I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, but it's it, it's popping. You know, it's really small. Okay. But the guys at Silicon Prairie News, I don't know if you've heard about them. Silicon They're doing some great Prairie News. Silicon Prairie. So we've heard, Jeff, yeah. uh, you, we've all, we've heard of Silicon Shire. Uh, <laughs> I, we, yeah, I, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, I just think that's so. I just think it's so great. I love that. Yeah. So the Silicon Prairie is kind of the. Actually, I don't know the exact definition, but I know it's three main cities: uh, Des Moines, Iowa, Omaha, Nebraska, and then Kansas City, Missouri. And I think St. Louis is starting to get roped in. It's yeah, kind of this nice. area around here: Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska. Very, very cool. Um, so oh, yeah. here in LA, uh, a Meetup.com tends to be a big hub or a big catalyst for startups is are you finding something similar out there you know there's not a whole lot going on with meetup.com there's a the silicon prairie news guys they have a website they have a new local events calendar okay uh they promote most of the events so everyone finds out via those guys typically okay mm. gotcha interesting very that's great have you, so heard of, have you heard of big omaha no. it's an event you heard of it 
No. Uh, maybe. Okay, well, I'm surprised because this conference is amazing. It's probably the best startup conference I've ever been to, and it's here in Omaha. It's run wow. by the Silicon News guys. Okay. Well, uh, what, what, why is it such an out, 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 you know, standout versus some of the other places you've been? Well, the reason it's such a great conference is that it's it's small enough so that you feel it feels like kind of an intimate environment. You get to know a lot of the folks that are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they they get national attention. They bring in speakers from all from both coasts. Okay. And uh, I don't know. You get, you get kind of the national attention with the kindness of the Midwest, if you will. That's you know cool. I mean? Yeah. No. We, we, yeah. Yeah. We actually had uh, the guys uh, uh, from Drifty, and they're in Madison. And uh, yeah, there's this whole like you know we work harder, we're like more down to earth, all that. You know, you guys on the coast are like too crazy for us. You know what I mean? You know, trying to blow right up in the middle you know? of everything, right? I don't know if we work harder or what. I do believe there's a, there's something to be said about the Midwestern work ethic. Okay. But I've met great people in every city and every country in the world. Right. So, so, so you've um, had the pleasure of being able to work from home yeah. uh, from your desk, right? Tell us yeah, about I'm that. Yeah, home right now, yeah. I mean, have you always been able to just work from your laptop on the go? Yeah. Um, well, not always. But when I started getting into these into this kind of startup world, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I love it. Right. It's a, you know it's pros and cons, right? Working at home, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You get your face time. So my startup GM is actually a, a side project of mine. Right. I work okay. full time at Douala, and I do head over to the Douala office every once in a while to get some face time because you got to get that face time. Gotcha. Okay. Tell us a little about Douala. Okay. Well, if you've never heard of Douala, it's essentially a payments network. Okay. It allows you to send money or request money. Okay. Uh, to any person or organization, including businesses and nonprofits, directly from your bank. Okay. Um, it's a, pretty much like PayPal, but with extremely lower fees and no Ooh, credit cards. I like that. Yes. Fees are fees are just twenty five cents for a transaction, regardless of the size. Oh, that's awesome! So it's not a percentage; it's just fixed. There's no percentage. Oh, I love that. Yes. Um, and we have an API that folks can hook into, and they can integrate Dual directly into their apps and their web and their mobile apps. And very nice. Very awesome. nice. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's. And these it, guys, it's, these it's, guys it's, are out there in Omaha. They're, no, they're actually in Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, they're in Des Moines. Okay. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, maybe three now, uh, they announced their Series C, which was sixteen and a half million from Andreessen oh, Horowitz. Wow, they got some money from Andreessen Horowitz. Holy cow! So you guys are—they're executing. You guys are really killing it, obviously. Wall is doing great. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's Series B round was led by. Uh, Union Square Ventures out of New York. Oh wow, that's so great, man! I have to tell you, uh, PayPal has just gotten way too big and way too slow, and it, it is just—I <laughs> I mean, I bitch, I bitch, I, I bitch them out quite a bit on the show. I know, Jeff, uh, you know my—I mean, yeah. I, they power a lot of my transactions because there's really not a lot of com you know a lot of viable competitors, so I'm always looking. And uh, mm. I'm gonna have to look at Dewala yeah. here. No, no one really likes PayPal. Uh, what's the best use case for Dewala right now? I see you've got individuals, businesses, developers. You know the API, all that stuff. We love to hear anytime we can make this stuff easier. Yeah, you know one particular use case we've been getting a lot of traffic on lately is payouts. So if you're a company and you're paying out hundreds or thousands of people, yeah. mm. uh, either using PayPal's mass pay tool or using uh, wires or writing paper checks and mailing them out. Right. It costs a lot of money to do all of that. Yeah, yeah. We have a tool called Dwala Mass Pay that lets you pay thousands of people in just a few seconds for oh, just a few That's so great. So this could really power marketplaces if you have a startup. Yeah, both the pay in and pay outside. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Do you guys Very are cool. finding a lot of developers using your API for things like that? I don't know the numbers, but yeah, most of our, I believe most of our transactions are driven through our API, not, oh, using, great. not using the web and mobile app directly. Uh, for, oh, how okay. big are they right now, uh, headcount-wise, do you know? Roughly? Walla? Yeah. We've surpassed 40 at this point, soon to hit 50. Wow. Oh, and year. how early did you get in? Uh, I joined in October. I, don't, okay. I think I was number 30 or something. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool, man. Very cool. All right, so we're straying a little bit off topic here. Tell us more about Startup Genome and and, and yeah, and you know your your role at Startup Weekend and and all that. Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure I've really defined Startup Genome quite yet for you, but okay, let's go for it. The mission of Startup Genome is to one create the world's most accurate and up to date database of startups and all the players in the startup community. Okay. Uh, and then make that data free, open, and accessible to anybody in the world, and then layer on really cool visualizations. So we oh, started I like by that. I like that. 
we started by importing just a bunch of data. We, we, we sucked down all the data from Crunchbase's API, which was difficult to deal with because the, <laughs> the data integrity wasn't the highest. Um, whoa, whoa, hold on. Don't, don't, don't go over this one. That. So what, what yeah. do you mean by data integrity? Did you have, were there bots, were you scraping it and they cut you off? What, what, is it, what are you saying? No, they have a they have a pretty open policy. We're able to get all their data. Okay. Uh, the data itself just was kind of dirty. Um, they didn't have a lot of standards on things like location, so we had to do a lot of cleaning up of location in order to get like G, like uh, you know lat long yeah, coordinates. Yeah, lat long. Yeah, yeah. And then they had a lot of stuff in there, just restaurants and you know mom and pop shops and stuff mm -hmm. that we didn't want in our database. And... Gotcha. Had nothing to do with like real startup community. Well, stuff. yeah. Real quick, how do you make that decision? Yeah. Yeah. How do you make the decision to keep the startup restaurant out? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah, mom and pop Chinese Chinese restaurant over here. What the hell is that doing in Crunchbase? Well, well, actually, fundamentally, I kind of think about this all the time. I've been to Startup Weekend and whatnot. Like, we say startup this is a startup show. We're always talking about consumer web apps, you know, or B2B web, like web apps, you know, stuff that lives on the internet. Uh, I just feel, you know, we kind of give away the, uh, like, brick and mortar startups. So how do you guys make that decision is kind of my big fundamental question. Yeah, well, that's an entirely different question, and I'm, I'm happy to be, try to answer, which is what is a startup? Right, right. You define right. a startup. That's, yeah, yeah. that's a challenge that we've run into. Uh, but yeah. before I do that, um, I think that, you know, we just stumbled upon one of the things that I think is kind of the weakness of the, the philosophy behind Crunchbase oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, how, and how I think Startup Genome can be a little bit different, and that's twofold. One is... Uh, in, with Crunchbase, there's just a couple of guys up in AOL's office just approving everything that gets submitted. And they don't really know what's happening in Omaha right. or you know yeah. Kazakhstan or anything. Right, right. Um, so we we've, we're building a network of volunteer curators okay. to basically own the data for their city. We've got 275 around the world, and we're growing. Uh, and the hypothesis there is combination of crowdsourced data, but with also curated data, okay. can lead to more accurate data. Okay. Uh, and then second is to build it around communities, not just a massive one user, you know, search the world type format, but have destination pages for every city so people can see what they care about. And Very cool. Look at the photos, Very cool. Around. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what's a startup? That's that's a tough question. And the way that I think I'm trying to answer that. Well, hold on. Be before you get into that, Shane, yeah. how did you clean out all the mom and pop grocery stores or random yeah. crap that happened to be in Crunchbase? Because if you're looking at a thousand rows of records, or I mean, how'd you how'd you do this? Yeah. Well, we're so the way we're doing it is we're um, all right. So quick history: when we first started it, we launched every city at once. We pulled all the data in. And we built maps for every city, and we just launched it. And there's okay. thousands of maps out there. Okay. And uh, we did it before we cleaned the data up. And people looked at the maps, and they said, this data is out of date. Right. Close, right? Okay. Mm. So what we've done is we've taken a more deliberate approach where uh, we basically shut down all the maps. And we only launch a map when a curator comes on board, helps ah, us clean the data right. up for that city. Oh, that's then brilliant. We can make more noise around a launch that way. I love it. I love that, man. I love this. Mapping is the is sort of the base uh, unit that many people can collaborate over because everybody can relate to each other from geography perspective. Sure. And, Very uh, true. Yeah, it's sexy. I want to do more cool things. If you go to Startup Genome, you'll notice in the top left there's a tab for charts and graphs. Okay. And that's something that I wish I could show you. I just don't have ready yet. Okay. But we're going to be launching here in uh, at the end of the month, hopefully. Okay. Well, you know, uh, you can always cool. share your screen and show us the show us some insider juicy cuts of something you got. You know, I don't have anything for it. <laughs> um, okay. It doesn't even we're, have we're to be beautifully away. designed. It could just be, you know, really cold grids for all I care. Well, I can announce something that I haven't announced it uh, publicly yet. Okay. And that is all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We just I... received a grant from the Kauffman Foundation. Is that right? Our... You get you guys got a grant. We got a grant. That's awesome. Um, we're able to bring on a full-time developer, and we're looking for some others to join the team, and okay. really get this thing out. Oh, dude, so. that's exciting, man! That is really nice. cool. That is really cool. You want to plug that on the show? What technologies are you using? Well, I mean, the site's built in PHP, the database is on MySQL, okay. and uh, the if you look at the maps, they're powered by a, a software called Leaflet. And then yeah. the the the, the uh, that's the, that powers the visualization. And right. then we did some custom stuff as well. But then the the map data is actually using OpenStreetMap instead of Google Maps. Gotcha. 
yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're we're trying to get those guys on. Um, yeah, because uh, we, you know, there's not a lot of options, man. It's like Google Maps, and that's it. You know. Um, yeah, I really like what they're doing with OpenStreetMap. I think it's technically a little bit more accurate, and it's got a, the same kind of philosophy with volunteer curators, and it's very open and crowdsourced. Right, yeah. right, right. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, crowdsourcing with maps just seems like a, it makes sense, right? Like, how else are we going to cover all of the localities? And how else are we going to do it without getting a, you know, Drive getting cars around the world with cameras? Exactly, on. without the car infrastructure from Google and and the big money that Google has. So, right. absolutely. All right, so yeah, let, let's go right back into it. what is a startup. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, here's what I've discovered because I've probably had fifty people ask me this. Everybody has a different definition of what a startup is. All right. And so if you look at, I'll share my screen, if you look at startup genome, you'll notice that we have filters. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm cutting to it now. Yeah. All right. We've got filters on the left and on the right. Okay. Uh, on the right, you'll notice a few here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh, yeah. The filter, just the map. Yeah. Um, you can filter by date founded. So some people might say, oh, a startup is, you know, has to be three years or less. You know, once it's three years down the road. Uh, All right. <laughs> some, some people will say, well, once it's raised so much money or so many different rounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. so many employees, for example. Right. Um, <laughs> That's great. So, like, it's, it's, not, it's hard to quantify. And so, basically, what we've done is we've just built filters around those data points and right. let mm -hmm. you define what a startup is. That's, fuck That's oh. brilliant. Well, what's, what's your answer, though? What's your filter if, yeah, you, yeah. if you had to, you know? Sure. I subscribe to more of the Steve Blank model that, or definition of a startup that a startup is – a group of people uh, in pursuit of a a uh, repeatable business model. Okay. That which can the which can scale. Which can scale, scalable, repeatable. Okay. And and so how long does that last? Is it after three years? Is that still applicable? I think it. I think it just depends, man. I mean, Dwala is four years old. Everyone still calls it a startup. Is okay. Twitter a startup? Can no. Yes. I don't know. Is it still? That's a good question, man. I guess, I, I'd I guess, have to say I guess no. For me, it would be like once you're profitable. Price you profitability of startup. Some mm. some some companies are profitable within a few months. If if mm. people are putting your startup as something that they're building their resume, I don't know. If like if social media, I, I do Twitter. I don't know if you're a startup anymore. Maybe, maybe you are. I don't know. No, this. All right. Is, so okay, to, to further uh, expand on the startup definition what are the fringes or edges of startups uh, that aren't necessarily internet or web or like you know on the edges of that towards the mom and pop restaurant um, I don't know how to answer that exactly but on startup genome we're we're, we're inclusive of all industries we're not just focused on web tech although most of the most of the most of the companies that are being submitted to Startup Genome you know, have some kind of technology component to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we have an industry filter on the left sidebar, and okay. you can, you know, uh, clean technology, hospitality, right. uh, finance. Right. Oh, okay, gotcha. Great. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, let me pull that up. Very cool, man. What do you? Th very, what's very your fun. thoughts on this whole like Silicon Beach, Silicon Prairie, Silicon Shire? What's your feeling on on that Silicon meme? I kind of wish they would uh, stop using it, just because I don't think the like the word silicon makes any sense anymore. Like it was unique to the valley because you know chips were being made and chips aren't being made everywhere else. So like, right. why are we still using the word silicon? But right, right. Uh, but it's cute. I mean, it's cute and right. it's fun, and I I don't see anything really wrong with it. Right. I guess. You know what? It, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta admit. Everybody was inspired by the by the Facebooks and the Apples and the Googles from Silicon Valley, and everybody wants a little bit of that that fairy dust. You know, let me sprinkle that in in the prairie here. Let me sprinkle it over here in, in the Shire. You know, and so they're just trying to get some of that action. Yeah, I think they are, and it it worries me a little bit when I hear somebody say that um, because I think every community is really unique. They have their own combination of ingredients. Omaha is very unique. Kansas City is Kansas City. Nobody's going to be like Kansas City. Yeah. Kansas City didn't try to be like everybody else. They should just try to be the best Kansas City they can be. Right. Yeah, I guess you got a point there, man. But I have to tell you, man, there is quite a rivalry between L.A. and 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 San Francisco Bay Area. I could tell you that I, straight up, bro. It is like <laughs> L.A. startups are like, uh, you fuck those guys up in the valley, man. We're we're building L.A. You know, there's a very 
uh, territorial thing going on. Hey, I think. For, forget uh, the startup scene. There's a NorCal, SoCal, you know, you know, like in general, you're right. Just like even yeah. just in language yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. you know yeah, everything. Yeah. There's yeah. sort of a, a competition there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's even more emphasized with uh, in technology. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I see it all over the place. Minneapolis, St. Paul, <laughs> they compete. Freaking nice. Des Moines, West Des Moines, like they, there's there's these little geographical battles, and I don't. I just wish everybody could help each other. You know. <laughs> you know. Okay, that's yeah, a, Amul that's a... and I were going to start a North versus South like battle map. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. see who, like tug tug of war or something. You know, right. Who, who's getting I don't know more what the, the money? Would be though. Yeah, yeah. More funding. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how are people using the startup genome maps uh, in their you know to help them find local startups? Are they like tra traveling and finding places? Like, what are a lot of the use cases for the maps? Yeah, traveling is a good use case. Another use case is when somebody moves to a new town, they want to see where the startups are clustering, where the offices are, right. who's there. Yeah. Um, and we've been asked a lot lately for glo like global views on industry. Okay. And so that's something we're going to launch shortly. Very cool. What does that mean, global so views? Are just so if I'm interested in fashion and I want to see where the hot fashion spots are, I can do that? Yeah, just the the concept is show me fashion and give me a filter if I want to filter by geography or if not, and then just show me who's investing in fashion companies, wow. who the founders are in fashion wow. companies. Very cool. Where are they located? What are the most popular cities for fashion companies? I have, to, I have to tell you, you know, I'm a big believer that startups are going to change the world in the next 20, 30 years, man. <laughs> and technology startups specifically and, and small teams specifically. And uh, mm -hmm. your map could be a really good sort of leading indicator where all the stuff is happening around the world. Well, thank you. Yeah, I like that phrase, leading indicator. Yeah, <laughs> leading indicator. Yeah. Are yeah. you guys are you guys plugging into like uh, AngelList or anything, any other data sources than you mentioned Crunchbase? We're plugging into uh, LinkedIn right now, okay. and we're also importing data that we're getting from a few partners, including Thomson Reuters and the Kauffman Foundation. Very cool. Um, and hopefully soon uh, we'll figure out a partnership with Startup Weekend uh, okay. if the stars align. And then AngelList is on is on my list. We're definitely going to build the ability to OAuth in AngelList and import your profile. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I want to have a, a deeper conversation with those guys. I just don't think one. I don't have the contact yet, although I haven't really tried very hard. Okay. Because I don't think I'm ready. But as soon as I get over the fact that I'm never going to be ready, I just yeah, yeah you're never going to be ready. I'm here to tell you right now, man. I know, I know. Just, I know that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do plan to, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Angelus probably has the best oh, yeah. startups right now. No, no, no they're, right. they're killing it right now, man. Uh, so, I'd be Yeah, great. so in what way do you want to, do you think you could integrate them to get a little bit uh, geeky on the data level? Uh, you know, how would you, in, you know, uh, so you're going to pull my profile when I join Startup Genome, save me a little bit of time there. Yeah. What other interesting ways can you see yourself interacting with their API? That's a great question. Yeah, because you know they have a social network. They got a little bit of visualization. Well, it's great they're curating the data pretty well, yeah. um, or people are curating their own data there already. It seems. Yeah. I don't know, man. I haven't figured it out yet. Okay. I just know it's a great resource, and I'm pretty sure I can add value to Angelus somehow. I just got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I have to tell you, um, if you can get started on the, on that first or uh, cold email out to those guys, and. Uh, and set up a nice little cold email sequence to, so eventually by email 7, they'd be like, all right, this guy is bugging us. Let's finally check it out. All right, he's sharing some good data points. Yeah, we can certainly see them getting adopted. All right, let, let's, uh, let's work on something. Yeah, I'll send him a link to uh, this re recording of this, present, of this, uh, <laughs> this show. Even better, even better. Exactly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, uh, so tell us about the grant. You know, you briefly mentioned uh, you, you got a grant from the Kauffman Foundation. How did that happen? And, and give us a little bit of background there. Um, how did it happen? I mean, I got to know the Kauffman guys when I was working at Startup Weekend. Okay. And uh, when I launched this project, uh, they actually reached out to me, but probably because they saw it somewhere when I was announcing it and uh, just offered their advice. And then after a few months when they started, when they saw us launching new features and being serious about it, right. uh, they invited me to come down and, and you know, apply for a grant. Oh, that's so awesome. the guy I'm working with there is uh, Dane Stangler. That is so great, um, man. Nonprofit money. Is that the best money ever? 
Free money? Yeah, free money is the best money ever. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That is so great. Are you? Uh, uh, so, what are you doing still at Dewalla? I want. I want you to just do this full time. Uh, I love Dewalla. Um, I believe in the mission of Dewalla. I kind of had this vision that, and I was doing startup genome before Dewalla, and uh, I was looking, admittedly, for a way to make it full time. But it was before I got the grant. Right. And. Um, uh, I decided when I was leaving the company I was working at before Dwalla that I was either going to start my own company, I was going to try to make Startup Genome full time, or I was going to work at Dwalla. Dwalla was the only company I really wanted to even work for, and it's okay. because of the great team there. So I called Ben up and I said, "Do you have a job for me?" And he offered me a job, and I took it because uh, it's a great experience. I'm learning a lot. I think Dwalla is benefiting from Startup Genome, and Startup Genome is benefiting from Dwalla, and I'm benefiting from. Well, I think I believe in side projects. I think everyone should have one side project, not two. Okay. Not three, one. <laughs> yeah, because we all have all these great ideas, but we can't focus on everything. Well, I can't focus on one thing for 80 hours a week. Okay. You know, it's just my mind blows up. So I need to have something that I can shift focuses, and then I end up or foci, right. and then I end up taking lessons from one and applying it to the other. So I believe the side project is helping. Okay, so tell us about that synergy. What are you are you are you finding? Dewall is reaching out to some of these guys that you're mapping on Startup Genome and, and to get them using the service. What is the relationship there? Uh, I guess I'm talking about relationships mainly. I've been able folks that I've met through Startup Genome through Startup Week, and I've been able to pass over to Dewall and. And they've, they've benefited from integrating Dwala and using Dwala. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Startup Genome benefiting from Dwala, I guess that would be me personally building uh, building my skill set, my knowledge base about user acquisition, user engagement product, and then okay. applying that to Startup Genome. Let, let's get into it. So tell us, what have, what have you learned over there, Dwala, in terms of all those three things? Oh, well, I've learned that user engagement is tough. So my, my job is to... Uh, get people to come back and use Dwell after they sign up. Okay. Keep yeah. them engaged. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and my, my the goal handed down to me is to kind of double our engagement rates by the end of the year. Whoa, uh, double the engagement there's a, rates. There's a double very engagement. specific target. Love yeah. it. That, that, that can be done. Yeah, you think so? I think so. And what what is the metric? Are they looking at time on site, uh, days between visits, just simply yeah, yeah. having them come back again? Transactions is the main thing. Okay. I mean, okay. some people log on and just look around once a month. If they mm -hmm. don't do anything. Right. That's not as interesting. So, okay. I, the perfect user is somebody who does at least one transaction every thirty days. Gotcha. Or more, of course. Right. 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 And but so, this finding active users. Okay. And this is through your web app and your website, or mobile and web. Well, you can initiate a dual transaction either through the, the dual mobile app on your computer using the web app, or via a third-party app that has the Dwalla API integrated. Okay, so that counts too, because you mentioned the API is a <clears throat> significant part of your traffic. It certainly is, yep. So uh, cool. in terms of getting a person to use the system, you create a transaction, what, what is the big inertia? Is it just, uh, I don't even know if these Dwalla guys are going to be able to handle this. Is there going to be any, is there trust? Is it an issue of just functionality? Maybe they're just having a hard time with the UI? What do you feel is what's going on? All of the above, man. It depends. We have folks who have a trust issue. Yeah. Anytime you ask somebody for their bank account credentials and their social security number, right. uh, they're going to go, okay, wait, is this safe? Right, right. And uh, yeah. you know, we have all the right security partners. Um, and I would argue, and it would be a whole different conversation about why Dwell is, is much safer than other payment networks and much yeah. safer than credit cards. Right. Um, uh, some people that doesn't that doesn't bother them at all. Right. I don't know about you, but I signed up for Simple.com, and uh, I got a bank account. Then it was just like this implicit level of trust. Like maybe it's our generation, but we just I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, but right. I, uh, I I trust. Right. I trust. I, mean, I use my credit cards to buy stuff from all kinds of websites. Yeah. I just I trust. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not an issue. For some people, they have an issue with the web interface. Okay. Our user experience needs some massive improvements on Dwalla. Okay. Um, some people have that kind of problem. Some people just don't can't figure out how to use it or why they should use it. And so there's a there's a problem with education. Yeah. That's one of the things that I that I also took on my lap when I joined Dwalla. We built a new web a new a new uh, homepage. We built some landing pages. Right. Educational uh, tours and things like that. So when yeah. people sign up, they know what they yeah. can use gotcha. Dwalla for. Uh, really briefly, so are you really getting into the psychology of those users and their behaviors. Like, I'm sure if you can get them to do the second, third, 
fourth transaction, then you're gold. They're, they're stuck. You know, they're going to keep using it. Like I can imagine myself with PayPal or something. I sign up yeah, for an yeah. account because I had to use it that one time to pay that guy right. or, or something. And then it's like, now I, for, I want to forget about it as a consumer. But if you can get me to use it one or two more times after that, now I'm like, okay, now I get it. Now I know what it's for. Yeah. Now I'm going to bug my, you know, my uh, roommate to pay me rent through it or something. Right. right. So yeah, have you noticed patterns like that, or, or have you studied the psychology yeah, and behavior? I haven't studied it deep, deeply enough, the psychology. We're, we, we send out surveys. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to learn on that front, okay. uh, but we don't know enough yet. We, I, I do know that uh, if someone does one transaction, they're highly more likely to do another transaction, so that first one's always a win. That's it, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Huge, yeah. And uh, I also know that recurring Payments. If we can get somebody to set up a recurring payment, like paying their bills, their utility payments, yeah. uh, donations to their church or their non paper nonprofit or whatever, donation right. to our podcast, yeah, <laughs> yeah, donation to your podcast, smoking right. not coffee, yeah, exactly, right. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so uh, you know, I, I didn't want to talk too much about Duala, but I'm just going to ask this last question. Uh, well, what have you whatever. found um, has been working for user acquisition for Duala? What's the, what's the big the big lever that's been really working? Um, I guess there's a bunch of stuff we're experimenting with, but I'll mention two things that have that have worked. One, we have full-time biz dev folks, um, Nicole and Alex. They both live in New York, although Nicole recently moved to San Francisco because we're opening an office out in San Francisco. Okay. And they're driving most of our most of our uh, acquisition. They're doing it okay. through partnerships with companies. Right. So they talk to companies about integrating Dwalla, and when they integrate Dwalla, right. especially on the payout side. Yeah. If they send out a thousand people money and right. those people are getting emails or text messages or whatever that says, "Hey, you've been sent thirty dollars. Sign up right. and claim withdrawal right. to your bank account." Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's bang for our buck, right? Dude, that's there. huge. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And then the other piece is something I implemented when I when I joined, and that's a referral program. Okay. Uh, we have a program right now. I mean, I know Dual is really cheap. It's just twenty five cents a transaction, but if you refer a friend, yeah, we'll give you uh, ten bucks worth of free transaction credits, and that's. 40 free transactions, okay. and that's unlimited. And so some companies are using that to okay. refer people okay. and just banking up these credits. Basically. Yeah, wow. yeah. That's, that's great. Cool. Yeah, no, that's really great. All right, so l let's quickly go back to Startup Genome again. Um, what is, okay, so you mentioned you're, you're looking to get a developer on. You've got some money from the foundation. Got uh, the developer on full time. Yeah, yeah. So where, where, where do you, where, where, what are you going to use the money for? Obviously, yeah, what is the developer going to be working on? Where is the future of this thing? Is where do you see it going next few months, next few years? Give us a little big picture roadmap. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, I don't know which which step is first or second, but kind of in parallel between now and July. July, we want to make a new launch. Okay. I want to do the following: one, complete user experience refresh. Uh, I want to combine the map and the list view as well as the charts and graphs into one digestible experience. Okay. Um, and then allow people to look at their community over time and slice and dice it in ways that uh, we, we're not showing right now that people have oh. said that they want to see. Yeah, like who's investing in this community from oh, the outside. That's cool. I like the that. investors here that live here, where are they investing in? Right. Um, so flow of capital, industry pie charts, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and then I also want to, we have a big project to automate as much data as possible. So I talked about we're hooking into LinkedIn, yeah, mm -hmm. building uh, building crawlers that will essentially automatically update company and people profile pages. Okay. Great. Uh, I want to do that with AngelList if I can mm -hmm. figure it out. Right. And then um, also monitor web traffic and social media buzz on a company basis using oh. like, like Alexa and uh, Quantcast and okay. yeah. uh, social media. Wow. And, uh, and then let people sort within a city, say, all right, who's getting page views, who's getting traffic, who's getting news mentions, who's getting... Whoa. And Holy cow, Shane. Them. This is quite a... Wow. That, that This whole press mention bit is really very cool. I like that. Yeah, I like it too. You know, it's not perfect, but it'll be. It it could be like you said, a leading indicator. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, if we refresh that like every day or every week, and you can oh, look at this like, is awesome. Board, so Shane, team. you have to make this happen, man. You have to make this happen. 
We're going to do it, yeah. Dude, this is going to be awesome. I love this. Now, yeah. in terms of design, what are you thinking? I mean, right when you say you want to integrate it, you want to be a little bit more holistic, are you thinking about pulling out the that panel on the left and, and kind of integrating into one center sort of visual stream? Are you thinking – give us a little bit of a visual picture here. I, I hired a design firm because I'm not a designer. I, <laughs> I, do not, I do not know what the right answer is, but I do okay. think that if you look at the top left on that bar, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like maps, list, and then charts. Yeah, yeah. I think it should all be one combined experience. I completely agree, yeah. I think it could just look a lot nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think all the filters could be uh, kind of defined better. There's some filters that are missing that should be added. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, we've got to strike a balance between over overwhelming people with too much data, but also making right. it very easy and simple. Have you considered possibly allowing certain people um, be able to export the data out once they've filtered it and like, okay, I love this set. I want to export just this set out. Yeah. In fact, we have that. So curators can export the data for their city at any time. Okay. Hmm. Um, if you if you're upgraded to a curator, you get access to this back end and gotcha. you can change any company profile within your city. And you gotcha. can export. And then also, if you click on about at the top, yep. you'll notice on the right side under metrics, mm -hmm. you scroll yep. down just a little bit, there is a link, and we update this. We try to update this once a month, we remember, oh. to download our entire global database. Oh, wow. Cool. And just suck all our data out. Dude, so that, is, that is awesome. That is the whole thing. Oh, Love man. It. I hope because of this free money that you never – you always keep that link updated, man. <laughs> Okay. Does that yeah. mean uh, any plans to offer an API? We do have an API. Yeah. If you scroll great. down to the footer. Awesome. Okay. Um, you'll see a link for oh, this API. Is, this is so great, man. We're we're building oh. out smoking out coffee our own sort of front end, and uh, we're going to be using this API, Jeff. I have a feeling. Yeah. Well, let That's me know. Cool. I'll help you guys integrate it. Oh, this is uh, so right great. now. The API lets you query on a city, and then it spits back a list of all the companies and information about those companies in any given city. Okay. Oh, great. And I think there's also a company in person endpoint. Okay. Oh, um, very cool. We've got some more work to do on the API, but it is live. Uh, also, I, one thing I did mention is that our maps are fully embeddable. Okay. Oh, nice. The yeah. map on the bottom left, there was that embed this map button. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can take it, you can customize it, you can throw it up on any website. It's all free. This is really great, man. Nice. The, tell, uh, tell me about your, uh, you know, I, you've given us a little bit of a roadmap. It's very exciting. I super hope you execute on this stuff. Um, where what are the big challenges beyond of of course now, now you've got a little bit of money what what's the is it is it getting people to use it is it just getting people getting yeah. the word out what's 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 yeah the big... that's the biggest challenge getting the word out getting people to use it and then mm -hmm. once they use it getting them to come back give, give them enough value mm -hmm. so that they come back okay yeah uh, I think the leaderboard in any city could be interesting yes uh, absolutely. I could get people to come back on a regular basis yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. get the NorCal versus SoCal going yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The ability to you know, compare city could, or compare industries could be yeah. really interesting. Yeah. 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 With especially these rivalries that we're talking about. Uh, so, right. when, yeah. uh, are you, have you been having a tr difficult time at all getting curators, getting these individual cities to be loved by somebody? Uh, you know, it's not as hard as you might think to get curators, but the hard part is getting those curators to actually curate once they agree to do it. <laughs> okay. um, and that's where the data automation is coming in. Okay. Uh, yeah. I reached out to folks that are leaders in their community and they're the right kind of people to be curating for their city, right. but they're busy. They're just yeah, busy they're, people. They're busy people, yeah. yeah. L let me ask one of the maybe uh, common question about a startup database is like, how do you remove the startups that have failed? Oh. Or, you know, that, like, very good point. We mark, them, we mark them as dead. Okay. Okay. Put a big cool. crossbones over their profile. Right, right, right. I love it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. You want to show the life of it. It'd be even really cool. Oh. Uh, Jeff and I talk about this all the time, about the startup sort of life cycle, you know, and, uh, you know, the birth and the death sometimes. And then, of course, the, the acquired... You know, and the and the acquisitions, and then oh, and then the and then the eventual email out from the CEO. Uh, we're happy to announce we're acquired. Sorry about all your data's gone. You know, good luck. You got three days to export out. Yeah. You know, I'm like, God damn it. What? So ah. if you have your your curators pulling down startups as well when they are closing their doors or quietly the closing. Them is, is dead. Yeah. yeah, awesome. That's cool. Um, the other question I have is, what about uh, partnering, or, or are you getting people to embed this? And what about all the sites that you talked about that are doing this just for their location. So like in LA, we have a site called represent.la that yeah. looks a little bit similar. It's just kind of a map. Uh, you know, it's doing this, but just for LA. Yeah. 
Yeah. How, how are you going to work with those guys? So we, we talked the Represent LA guys into uh, building Startup Genome into their code base. So if you, if you do go to their GitHub repo, yeah. there is an option to just check a box and sync with Startup Genome. Oh, very cool. And we'll do a two-way data sync. Right. Um, I'm, I, it's been a challenge to get people to do that because it's so easy to just throw a Represent map up on your own domain and make it really pretty. Right. But I'm really mm -hmm. concerned that those maps, those Represent maps that people make are going to die because they're on some guy's domain who yeah, decides yeah, right. to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And also, the data can't be updated. Right. On Start mm -hmm. Genome, you can go and you can claim your company and you can keep the data fresh over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to talk all the Represent Mac people into just turning that toggle on so right. they can do a two-way seek and hopefully they'll keep their, their data a little bit more live. Right. Now, I don't care about... Uh, I don't care so much about people visiting Startup Genome. I care more about creating the best database in the world and if Mm. And if that means that other people are going to build cooler visualizations yeah, okay. and then use our data, that's right. amazing. Right. Uh, Excellent. That's totally great. I want to support, even if it's for profit reasons. That's, that's cool. Fine. That's cool. I dig that, man. I dig it. So, uh, how much money did the Kaufman Foundation give you? And how much runway do you got? It gave me $100,000. Okay. And what is that? what kind of runway does that give you? That's a six-month budget based on hiring a full-time developer and a design firm to redo everything with some okay. buffer. Okay. Okay, so you got six cool. months, and then what's your plan afterwards? Plan after that is to potentially build in a revenue stream. Hopefully that works. If it doesn't... Okay. All right. Uh, let, let's start well, talking well, revenue stream right away. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Given, given our conversation about, you know, driving the traffic to start up Genome and trying to drive the database, how, you know, how is that going to... What, what's your business model going to be? All right, so we originally brainstormed the idea of like a job board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I kind of kicked that to the curb because there's a lot of great job boards out there okay. that are probably doing a better job of it. Well, hold on a second, Shane. Why don't you get well, this? We, we already talked about a use case of me moving to Wisconsin, and I want to yeah. see where the startup hubs are. To, you know, this is like really valuable for yeah. me as yeah. a job hunter yeah. or a there, startup there's, Shane, there's so much money in job hunting, man. Don't don't completely let it go. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, let's well, we'll, let's hear what he's got to say. I haven't like thrown in the trash. It's just sitting in an ice box. Okay. You know? okay. All right. I'm just saying there's so much money. There's got to be a way to get a little bit of that, tear a little bit of that meat off of that big, you know, mastodon. There's yeah. there's a lot of meat on that mastodon is all I'm saying. Yeah. It, it could be a very lucrative revenue stream actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's this other stream that I got really excited about. Okay. A, a certain accelerator and a certain nonprofit and a certain university came to me and said, hey, we would love to tag people and companies in our system, in your system oh, and then get a white label view uh, with all the charts, lists, filtering, searching, all the maps and all that stuff of the data we care about because it's going to help us measure our impact and keep track of people and companies. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. So providing them with kind of this service lets them track the alumni and yeah. the companies that they're alumni that is a, that is really great. That is, especially a lot of these universities, they got money to burn. Some some of them. They have money. The sales cycle sucks, but they have money. Yeah, yeah. Sales and cycle they, does suck. Yeah, you're right. They approached us, and uh, mm -hmm. so there's definitely an interest. Okay. The use case seems great. Yeah. I think accelerators and incubators would be interested in something like this too, as well as nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That kind of in the startup space. Yeah, yeah. Those guys having a, like Startup Weekend, for example, they have a hard time measuring their impact. Okay, mm -hmm. let me ask you this just, just tactically here. Do you have email addresses for all of the companies, like just their generic infos and all that kind of thing? Info at? For most of the companies, yeah, I do. You do. Uh, how, how comfortable are you to, to, to sending them out a big sort of big general email saying hey we're th you know we're we've got you know this is what's going on with startup genome here's where we're at every you know s six weeks uh, giving them another update and what your revenue streams are and really getting that getting them involved in in the in the six month runway here I'm on the fence because they have an opt in okay they have an opt opted in and so I, I want to respect their privacy and um and so I'd rather just Get them on board through word of mouth and through the local curators. All right, so th this is this is this is a problem, uh, Shane. If if you're on the fence, and let's assume that these people, when they get your email, eighty to ninety percent of them are happy they got an email, versus the five or ten percent that will say, "Ah, what the hell? I didn't opt into this. Why is this guy spamming me every seven weeks?" 
Uh, <laughs> You know, honestly, I have to say, Shane, I I don't think people will be that upset, man. You just have to... Yeah, they're startups, right? They're going to be probably happy to get the email, I think. Yeah, I uh, think so, too, especially if it's relevant. You're not selling them candy bars or socks or something. Well, and what we found is that the startup community is generally pretty, uh, you know, uh, you know, generous, and they, you know, won't take as much offense to your spam, I don't think. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Just just think about it. Just think about it. Don't decide. All right, I won't decide right now. Just Hopefully, if if pretend I'm behind you, pushing you over the fence a little bit. <laughs> it's scary. It's I know. Scary. I know the span. You know, people people don't want to be bothered. Uh, email is sacred. It's a sacred cow. I get it. I get it. Thanks for the encouragement. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I want I want you to succeed. I, I it'd be a shame <laughs> six months later and you're like ah fuck it we ran out of money. I'm like ah no. <laughs> I wanted that time you, uh, indicator. I wanted that leading indicator. I wanted to see all the connections from the university <laughs> accelerators over time. I want to see those graphs. I want to see the movement on a globe. I want to see an animated thing. I want to see a slideshow. I want to see a VR goggles, you know, visualization where I move around oh, in the shit. world. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to see all this wow. stuff, dude. You have high expectations for this. <laughs> You're gonna make it, man. Just just send out that email. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Thank you, man. Send it out in batches. Yeah. There you go. Once you send yeah. out a small batch, there you go, a test batch. That's actually a good idea. Just yeah. send out a thousand. Yeah. See what the response rates yeah, are. See what the sort of responses. That's yeah. exactly. And say, you know, uh, I'm, you know, uh, forgive us if it's if it's you know intruding on your in- inbox, but uh, we want you to opt in if you want to receive further emails and just do it in small batches That's and see it. how it goes. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. I see no downside of that. Trust me, we've talked to entrepreneurs yeah. that were super scrappy, started small. And they started literally sending out batches of these cold emails, and that's how they were able to get uh, their early bootstrap days and get money and get employees and, you know, it, it's survival, bro. I mean, it's great to get the free money, but when that free money runs out, uh oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Or that's you can get Dewalla to just sponsor Whoa. it, maybe yeah. even. There we go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. I think so, there's a lot of opportunities for it, though. Uh, I mean, I think the the startup community needs it, and you yeah. know, really admires and really comes around tools like this. That uh, it's win win for everyone. Absolutely, I completely agree. So, what's uh, give us your uh, really briefly? Give us your how, what did you think of Startup Weekend? What's your thought on hackathons? What do you think of the whole thing? Like, because I have my own opinion, and I want to hear yours. Okay. Well, I think Startup Weekend is a little bit different than a hackathon. Okay. Um, I think Startup Weekend, if set, if the tone is set correctly by the facilitator at the beginning of the event, uh, it's very, it's very much about the experience and the education. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be extremely positive. Um, my best friends, uh, I've met through the Startup Weekend community. Um, I That's love great. doing Startup Weekends, and I still volunteer because it's personally rewarding when right. I see folks learning new skills or meeting people and then finding out where they started a company with somebody they met at the startup weekend. Right, right. Most of the teams at an event won't be successful. Right. And that's not what it's about. Right. It's just, it's about people. It's about teams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Networking, right. It's about community building, too. Yeah, yeah, community building. You guys talked about L.A. From what I understand, I've never lived in L.A. From what I understand, that first startup weekend out of Koloff in L.A. was... uh, Kind of like ground zero for the LA startup. Community. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So okay, how, how? What's your opinion on hackathons then? I think they're great. I mean, I, I don't see any downside to doing a hackathon. Uh, right. It's a different type of event. I like startup weekends. I'm favorable okay. to startup. Uh, wh- and and how, what is the difference in your in your point of view? Well, you typically get a hackathon. You're going to get developers and designers, okay. um, and they're going to have 48 hours to build something. Okay. Uh, at Startup Weekend, it's more about you also bring in the business and the marketing folks, and you learn more about lean methodologies. You learn more about idea validation, customer validation. Mm-hmm. It's trying to pack in like a startup like experience in three days. Okay. Less about specifically solving this one problem by building a like a, you know a solution mm-hmm. to that problem. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Um, but both are exciting, and they have different reasons, and they should both exist every year in every city in the world. Okay, so let, let's get into the why you think they should both exist. Like in many ways, some people I, I think may feel like, okay, what are these marketing people doing here? This is really just about the guys that build things. You know, how do you feel about that attitude? Like, you know, they may not have a lot to offer, and we just really want just designers and hackers. Yeah, look, you got to get all three to start up weekend. If you if you don't have designers. 
you're going to have product market fit, a well-researched market, uh, and you're going to have something that works, but it's going to look like shit. No one's going to use it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. If right. you have no developers, then you're going to have some really fancy wireframes and maybe right. some mock-ups. Right. You know your business model, but that's not going to work, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any business people, you're going to have something that works and looks very pretty, but maybe nobody wants it. <laughs> right. Um, right. You have no idea if people are going to buy it. You've done no research. You don't understand the market. Right. Um, and that's not to say that developers don't have some business sense and vice versa. Right, right. But uh, I have all three. They're different perspectives. Yeah. Uh, and within a week, within a weekend, you're able to go focus on those. The business folks can leave the room. Right. They can go interview potential customers and learn what they really want, how much they pay for it. They can gotcha. feed that back in the development process. Gotcha. More likely to build something that people actually want to buy. How would you, if you had to redesign the startup weekend or the hackathon, how would you would you set up? How would you make it better, higher quality? Would you do more of a vetting process so that 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 certain teams are put together in a better way in terms of like skills or uh, you know industry or sectors or that kind of thing? Yeah, that's that's tough. That's a tough question. Um, I do like the idea of industry focused hackathons and startup weekends. Yeah. Startup weekend has done some of those. They've done the education theme startup weekend. They did right. like a three D printing. Yeah. Um, I think I did like a health tech one. Yeah. Food tech. Those are cool. People are more excited about the mission. Yeah. Everyone like has something like more in common and it's a little bit more focused. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more focused. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to get people to show up. Really? It's hard to get people uh, to show up, okay. Just because you have a you know you have a smaller base of people that might be interested in it, that's mm -hmm. all. Gotcha. Uh, but it is easier to get sponsors. Really? Oh right, because the vertical. Yeah, yeah because like, the vertical. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Are are you uh, tracking the startup weekend companies on Startup Genome? Not yet. Ah. Oh. Will Will you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I want okay. to. Because that's actually one of the things uh, I was using before we started podcasting on Smoking Hot Coffee. I was bookmarking startups uh, out of my like obsessive passion and using some of the software I wrote to screenshot it and do stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I was started doing that at the startup weekend in uh, at the Coloft and. I think it would be great to sort of track the, I don't know, I feel like the, the whole idea is to ch put a startup out in a weekend, you know, it would be great to track that success, you know, like are they all failures or are there actually some successes coming out of the startup weekend? Yeah. Yeah, well, mostly failures. True. <laughs> all right, let, you know what, let, let's talk about that. So what, in your opinion, are, what are some of the key areas at the startup weekend or even the hackathon, like, what can they do to prevent sort of crappy ideas or you know, just things, teams that are forming around something that isn't going to work? Like, what, what could they, what are some of the guidelines? You know, don't try to build something that's way too ambitious. Try to keep it focused or what, what would you? Well, yeah. You, so you said two different things there. Um, the second thing you said was don't try to build too much. And that is very, very important. You've got to simplify, simplify, simplify. That is something you can actually build. Yeah. Uh, and something you can actually test within the 54 hours. Right. Uh, so that's important, and that's something that I preach when I'm facilitating a startup weekend. From the okay. beginning and then after a team forms, yeah. I go up to the team and I say, hey, simplify, make a scrum board, throw your okay. ideas up and start ripping ideas down until you have what's left of your very MVP cool. of that this weekend. Very cool, yeah. Um, and what? the other thing you mentioned, uh, oh, how, to, how can generally, like, how can a hackathon or a startup weekend prevent death or, or, or bad ideas. Right, right. I don't think it's so much about the idea, man. I think it's about the team. I think the most yeah. important thing is let's get the right people yeah. on the right team with the right set of skills. Right. And the idea is secondary to that. Somebody yeah. could pitch an idea which is pretty shitty right. and then be together and they yeah. say, well, let's change it or let's try this. Let's, and, and then you figure out something that works and if you're a great team and they can execute, yeah, yeah. you can build something. It's, right. The idea is less important. That's, that's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, that that's absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. The the right team can really turn an okay idea into magic. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. What what have you seen in your tenure at Startup Weekends uh, that have been breakout like these guys? This was a really great experience. Can you think of any notable? Man, all the things that flow through my mind are are are, are like individual success stories. Okay. Um, I have this one great story I'd love to tell. It's not it's not gonna answer your question, but that's fine. It's kind of how I got hooked on Startup Weekends and how I knew I wanted to do it. Right. Um, do you mind if I tell that? Yep, absolutely. Sure, please. Yeah. Okay. How much time do we have, by the way? How long is We've this? got at least 24 more hours. An hour-long interview. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we got, uh, we got time. Uh, so 
I organized the first one where I was living in Des Moines, Iowa. Okay. And uh, Clint from Startup Weekend Headquarters flew down and helped me run it. And afterwards, I said, this is a lot of fun. I want to try another one. Okay. And he said, why don't you fly up to New York and facilitate the one up there? We need some help. Okay. So I flew up there. No idea what I was doing. Okay. So I was, I was stuttering. Uh, you know, it was embarrassing. I was this kid from Iowa up there, and all these New Yorkers were like, who the fuck is this guy coming in here? <laughs> Uh, apparently nice. they're all in the mafia. Uh, right, right. Um, so that first event was terrible, but I tried it a, 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 a third. I guess it'd be a, the third event. I went up to New York and did the next New York event too. Okay. By then I had I had kind of figured out public speaking and I was much more confident. Very cool. And before the event, this girl emailed me. Okay. Um, and she said, "Hey Shane, I uh, heard about Startup Weekend. I don't." I don't really think this event's for me because I don't think anybody's going to really care about my skills. I'm a writer for Nickelodeon's children shows, and oh, uh, wow, and like who cares about you? Know, like who's going to what? You know, what team would benefit from my skills? Yeah. And I said, I tell you what, why don't you just come to the event? You don't have to buy a ticket. And watch the pitches on Friday. Right. And uh, and just you know see how they, and if you feel inspired by a pitch, you can join a team or whatever. That's great, yeah. So, so Friday comes around, I go there, she shows up, and she introduces herself. Right. Um, and uh, and she's like, yeah, I'm here, but, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm probably going to leave here. And I'm like, all right, just get some free pizza. Right. And she's just on the corner all night. Right. Like, oh, she's probably going to leave. Uh, and then people started pitching, and I kind of noticed that she was getting excited. She jumped up and pitched this idea. Hmm. And uh, she ended up getting enough votes to form an actual team. Wow! And then on Saturday, I I you know was doing my doing my rounds, and she was the one that was leading her team. Like she was the lead CEO, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she pitched on Sunday, and she gave the final presentation. And she was just a totally different person. Very confident, very excited about her idea. Yeah. Fell in love with her teammates. Uh, and then after the event, she came up to me, and she's like, "This is incredible. This is what I was the kind of experience I was looking for. Thank you." Uh, and and she actually she was like tearing up during this. Oh, and that's so great! That's when I knew I'm like, there's something to the startup weekend thing. Right. Ah, like, and and there's stuff. something to people that are not traditional developers or designers to come actually. Yeah, Nickelodeon yeah. writers. You know. Yeah, yeah Nickelodeon yeah. writers. Wow. What was her oh, product or what was she working on? I'm curious. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what the what the. You what don't the remember. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I got to. Go, I actually keep notes, so I could go find that out. But I wonder if she actually turned that into something. If she sold it, or I don't remember. No, no, the team didn't go on after the weekend. I don't okay. remember the, what the pitch was. All I remember is how I felt when she talked to me and right. what she looked like, and you know, yeah, the team in the face. Right, yeah, the, right. The team experience is really what it is all about. What have you found since we're talking about this uh, in terms of start weekends or even hackathons? The male female ratios. What have you What have you seen? Hmm. Yeah, it was definitely predominantly male. Mm. Um, startup Weekend's done a couple of uh, women-themed Startup Weekends, if you will. Yep. Uh, where they try to get like a majority female, and they succeeded in that. Okay. They eighty percent women. Okay. Um, I wish it was just even. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think every team needs at least one female. Okay. They yeah. have a, they have a different perspective. They look at things differently. Right. It's hilarious to me when you see like five dudes building a product right. and their target right. market is females. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a fashion like, app. Yep. This isn't going to work out. Right. This, is, this is for women that love bags. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I have to tell you, uh, Shane, it's been, a, it's been really great chatting with you, man. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to expect, but it's it's been really great. Um <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great startup stories. Uh, we can't wait to hear about the updates you've got to Startup Genome, the announcement uh, that are I know, behind, yeah. uh, behind uh, the curtains right now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Uh, when is this new redesign? Next month, should it should launch. We're targeting okay. July. Okay. Well, we should have, you know what, as soon as I have access to like the like the functional working version of it on beta.startupgenome.com, I'll send you guys... Login credentials, and you can please, check it out. Please do, app. please do. You awesome. know, I, I, as you were talking, I kept thinking, like, what could I do to convince Shane to start emailing? And 
I thought <laughs> if you could find a way to segment your database into regions, into zips, or into Southern oh. California, and then literally build notification systems based around regions. So oh. if I'm in the database, Smoking Hot Coffee isn't, let's say, headquartered in San Diego. And then if they, if a bunch of people make updates in San Diego, I get a big long email with all the recent updates in San Diego once every six months that I can filter and subscribe or unsubscribe to. Uh, you it, people will be indebted, bro. They will be indebted. I tr I promise you, you will not get people running you down with pitchforks and like burn this guy at the stake. It will not be that. They'll be happy. Okay, so the the concept is subscribe to your city and get updates about new companies and companies that died and acquisitions. Notable events, uh, press releases over, uh, you know, press mentions, all that stuff to give to give feedback to how they are within their ecosystem, to almost yeah. give a pulse to where they fit, where they're on the yeah, leaderboard, all that. Just a weekly digest of uh, your city would be absolutely yeah. great to keep a pulse on what's going. I, I already subscribed to a couple of their startup, uh, yep. you know, uh, digest. Yeah, yeah, startup okay. digest, yeah. I promise to do that. I promise. In fact, it was already on our plan. So. I'm telling you, Shane, if you well, just start, the, the key here is you want to be sending out a couple hundred thousand emails a month, and I guarantee <laughs> you, you'll find a way to make money off of this. Well, thank you. Just Would saying, you guys, uh, even if you put, even if you've added like telecommuting <laughs> jobs at the bottom of this list of this email yeah. outs, you'll, you'll make money off of that. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Okay. Events. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying, I'm man, there, 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 the there is so just, much oh. money. There is so much money in this, Shane. There is just so much money in this. You want to come join the company and, and I, I quit. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I, I, am. I was just going to try to pull up your careers page and mention again that you said you're a uh, hiring, right? Uh, designer <laughs> and uh, developer. Yeah, come so, on over. Yeah. What are you doing with this smoking hot coffee thing? <laughs> I'm a, I've never seen somebody more excited about Startup Genome. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I'm really passionate. I'm really passionate about infographics. I'm really passionate about, you know, finding ways of digesting lots of information and, and curating mm -hmm. the stuff. I could just totally see mm -hmm. as a company within an ecosystem, within a sector, uh, where do I fit? And you guys could be that where I fit thing, you know? So, anyways. All right, I'm going to go do it, man. I'm going to spend the next month. Awesome. I'm going to launch it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, cool, man. I have to say, man, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. Um, maybe you can set us up an introduction with DeWall. I'd love to get those guys on. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be really great. Uh, really anybody that's going to kill sure. PayPal is, is, is a friend of ours, man. <laughs> friend of ours, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do yeah. you think DeWall, is that their thing? Is that, Do they want to conquer PayPal? Is that their big, you know, the big uh, giant? Well, yeah. Uh, Yes and no. I think no because uh, no credit cards, right? And PayPal does a lot of credit card processing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, we do compete directly with some of PayPal's features. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can do it a lot more cheaper and more efficiently. Right. Um, have you, do you guys, you, did you guys know about Dwell beforehand? You know about the real-time gross settlement and the, the FISync thing? No. No, so I I know Stripe got a lot of buzz for developer, like developer friendly, developer API and all that. Yeah. So yeah. I think that could be a really big hook for Dewala if they're really going to push their API and push, you know, push the developer yeah. piece. You know, yeah. even yeah, though Stripe right. did get they did get acquired, but you know, that's a whole other story. Our, uh, in fact, our API has been compared with Stripe's API and being as just as developer friendly. Okay, I really yeah. dug that, man. I I love the fact. I don't want to use PayPal's gross buttons. I hate those buttons. I want to be able to reskin everything. Yeah. As a designer, I'm really big on redesigning the experience, and I don't like to be, you know, I, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to get stuck in that like PayPal's design. I don't. I don't want to do that. So. In fact, we have something called guest checkout that allows you to accept money on your site from folks using Dwali, even if they don't have a Dwali account. Wow, that's awesome. It sends them, off, it sends them over to the offsite guest, uh, the offsite checkout gateway. Okay. Mm. And then they they just punch in their bank account credentials, and that makes a one-time withdrawal. From and the how bank. does that look? Does that look seamless on my site, or does that look like another pop-out to someplace else? How does that look? It's up to you, man. We have an off-site checkout gateway. I don't know if you've used PayPal on other sites where it like sends you this temporary PayPal yes, page. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, which I don't do like. I don't like that. That's just like that's like the no tech, like super easy way to do it. Right. Or you can build a white label directly in the app. Very cool. Uh, you don't have to leave the website ever. Awesome. Uh, and that, that's what it has to be when you're doing transactions for things like in-app payments and like mobile games. Yeah. They can't leave the game, you know? Right, so, right, right. right.
Very cool. Great. Very cool. Well, awesome. Yeah, uh, we'd love to come talk about uh, all those features in full uh, in a later episode. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're definitely going to have you on again, man. We're going to be bugging you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'd love to do it again. This was fun. Yeah. Good experience awesome. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I love what and, you're doing for the startup community out there. And listen, man, we're we're you know we're in the same boat, man. We're, you know, you got you got a little bit of funding. We're we're kind of bootstrapping this, so we're looking for sponsors. So we're all trying to figure out a way to survive as well. So it, it, we're all kind of in this fight together, you know. So all right, well, yeah, I don't know <laughs> Let's how to make say it. That. Keep keep up the good fight. Yeah, yeah keep the good fight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thanks again, Shane, man, and uh, we'll be in touch. We're going to be putting this video up in a few days, and definitely send, you know, tell your friends and colleagues, and um, you know, we're doing this live one one p.m. every day, uh, Monday through Friday. One p.m. One p.m. Pacific. Pacific, yeah, Pacific Standard. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, man. You know, I'm going to share the love when uh, you guys post this video. So. Okay. Great. Beautiful, man. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks for oh, having no, th Yeah, thanks for yours. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Love to have you on again. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that and I'll make the intro to the dual guys. Awesome. Hey. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you later. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye. Bye.